Hey, how you doing? We're going to pick it up in Matthew chapter 11, verses 1 through 15. After Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. I tell you the truth, among those born of women, there has not yet risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing, and forceful men lay hold of it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. He who has ears, let him hear. So now when Jesus is done instructing his disciples, they go out and start doing ministry. And while that's happening, he goes on and he starts to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. And while he's doing that, some of John the Baptist's disciples, this is the guy who says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near, who's sent before Jesus. Some of John's disciples come to Jesus and they say, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? Now, I think this is a little bit bizarre because I would think besides maybe, maybe Mary, you would think John the Baptist would be the least person to ask a question like, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? A little bit of an odd question. I'm not really sure what to make of that, but... Then Jesus answers that. He says, go back and report to John what you hear and see. List all these amazing things, amazing things we've been reading about. Jesus raising the dead, curing people of leprosy, preaching good news to the poor, things like that. And then John's disciples were leaving and Jesus starts speaking to the crowd about John. Really interesting stuff. He says, what did you go out to see? You know, somebody dressed in fine clothes. We know he was made uh, dressed with camel's hair, things like that would have been a, a little bit of a weird, maybe crazy looking guy. And so he talks about John a little bit more and he tells you that he's more than a prophet and he quotes in um, Malachi 3 verse 1, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. This is a, a prophetic verse talking about John the Baptist coming before Jesus. And he's saying that John the Baptist is that one. He was the one to prepare the way for Jesus' coming. And so then he goes in verse 11 through 15, he says, I tell you the truth, among those born of women, there is not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet he was least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now these are interesting verses, a little bit bizarre. One of uh, the things that's important to remember when you're reading books like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, those four Gospels is these are in the New Testament, but while that's still the case, it still takes place under the Old Covenant. Really, how these people are acting are all under the Old Testament. And so, you know, when we're talking about people being, um, you know, John, you know, being the greatest that have been born of women and then and then he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. There's a couple of things that this brings to mind. One is that, well, I mean, when we get to heaven, I mean, that's going to be greater than anything we could do on this earth. Once we get made complete in that way, we have this greater connection with God than, than we could ever have really on this earth because we're made we're made complete in that way. And so once we're in heaven, that's, I think, kind of what this verse is talking about. And also, I think, just kind of a little offshoot of that, too, is like, um, you know, John John is certainly great, but there's, like, all these great things we get with the New Covenant, like, say, uh, getting the Holy Spirit and things like that. Um, just wonderful, wonderful things that we get that, um, that maybe John the Baptist didn't get in quite that same way, living in this kind of Old Covenant kind of time. And so he talks about John the Baptist a little bit more um, in verse 14. He says, and if you are willing to accept it, he's the Elijah who was to come. He was ears. Let him hear. Really neat uh, verses whenever we get to go back and look at Old Testament verses fulfilled and that sort of thing. Uh, what we can pray about, I think, is, 
you know, we see, you know, John the Baptist asking, you know, if Jesus is the one to come. And I think in the same way, like, these people needed to be prepared for Jesus to come and to see the signs and that sort of thing. And I think in the same way how we can apply these verses is like, we need to be ready for when Jesus comes back uh, again. We need to be ready and we need to know the signs as well and we need to be prepared for that. So let's pray along those lines that we're prepared and also that we're able to recognize the signs when they come. So Lord God, I just thank you for each person listening and I just pray uh, an extra blessing upon them. And I pray that Lord, just like when you came the first time, I pray that when you when you come again, Lord, that we're we're ready and and that we can we can recognize the signs as as some people did in the in the Bible and and also that we're not like people that um, they get lax or, or lazy or fall away, Lord God, but we but we're ready. I pray that we're ready in Jesus' name, Amen.